Hello, this presentation is about an article from Harvard Business Review titled Competing on Analytics. My name is Hazen Lee, and I'll cover some highlights in the article and introduce some application examples in human resource management. I hope you will enjoy it. This is the outline of the presentation. First, we will see some background of analytics and three key attributes of the organizations that compete on analytics as well as their sources of strength. Then we will see some applications in human resource management from another article. The conclusion part will include the summary of the presentation and some important notes. So the title of this article is Competing on Analytics. What is analytics though? The dictionary defines analytics as the science of logical analysis. But this is probably more familiar definition to you, expensive use of big data. What is big data? Well, let's look at Walmart's data. Do you know how much data Walmart gets every hour? It's 2.5 petabyte. What is petabyte? One petabyte is the equivalent of one million gigabyte. Very huge, right? And using this analytics requires a certain degree of statistical aptitude. So this is analytics. Why is analytics important? Or why should you compete on analytics? Today, the business world is becoming more and more competitive. So many companies have easy access to financial resources, technologies, or infrastructure, which means it's so hard to differentiate your company from other firms. But if you use analytics, you can differentiate by making better decisions over and over again. Using the best quantitative tools, you will rate the probability of the success and reduce some risk. So, to identify characteristics shared by analytics competitors, Dr. Davenport, the author of the article, and two of his colleagues at Babson College's Working Knowledge Research Center studied 32 organizations that have made a commitment to quantitative and fact-based analysis in other words, competing on analytics. The research revealed characteristics of the organizations, more specifically the three key attributes and sources of strength. So what are the three key attributes? Are you curious? Well, let me tell you one by one. The first one is widespread use of modeling and optimization. Most companies use basic statistics such as average revenue per employee or average order size. But these organizations go well beyond. For example, they would use predictive modeling to identify the most profitable customers or optimize their supply chains and determine the impact of an unexpected constraint, simulate alternatives, and route shipments around the problems. The second is an enterprise approach. In most companies, business intelligence is managed by departments. So each department, they would have their own tools, own data, or own paper. But analytics competitors treat those analytics as one single coherent initiative under common leadership, common technology, and tools. The third one is senior executive advocates. The research found out that in most companies that use analytics have strong advocates in C-level such as CEO or CIO. And apparently, the top-down effort for cultural shift is very important. So these are the three key attributes of 
analytics competitors. So now the question is this, how are they different? What are the sources of strength of analytics competitors? So what are the sources of strength? The first one is right focus. By using analytics, you can find the areas that can be most effective when you invest more or when you take more care. And also you can find how the customers react to certain initiatives and be more focused. The second one is right culture. By creating this analytical culture, your employees would more likely to operate on a hard fact instead of small qualitative samples. The third one is the right people. Analytics competitors look for analytical mind, statistical aptitude, and most of all, the ability to explain the complex and complicated idea in easy terms so that the shareholders, stakeholders, they can also follow what they are doing. The last one is the right technology. The right technology includes a data strategy and right business intelligence software and appropriate computing hardware for accommodating the big data. So these are the sources of strength. Let's look at some specific examples of using analytics. This is in human resource management, and I looked at another article using targeted analytics to improve talent decisions, people and strategy. This article included two specific examples, one from PricewaterhouseCoopers and the other from Pepsi Company, Frito-Lay Department. The first case comes from PricewaterhouseCoopers. PwC had a relatively high turnover for a key talent pool, so they wondered whether a deferred compensation program would work as a retention tool. The deferred compensation program offered greater pay in the future for those who stayed longer with the firm. But because they weren't really sure about the effectiveness of the program, they decided to conduct a research. First, PwC collected data by surveying current and former employees on their experiences at the firm to identify key variables and appropriate samples. But then collecting data was a challenge, so they had to identify offices that were representative of the firm's business that had stronger networks among the formal employees. Then PwC used some basic statistical techniques to estimate the total number of former employees to survey and the sample sizes and etc. They also used some advanced statistical techniques such as multivariate regression to find out some insights. In the end, they learned that work and life balance was the most important issue and compensation was rather small. So this case illustrates how a company can gain insight using analytics. The second case comes from Free to Lay, a division of Pepsi company. Frito-Lay had a high turnover for the route sales representatives, and some initial studies suggested that it could be caused by the compensation gap. But to better understand the situation, Frito-Lay launched a study that included surveys of both the sales representatives and their supervisors. First, they did some task analysis to identify some key variables and components. And then they partnered with their supervisors and managers to analyze the problem more deeply. And then it also made the gathering data much easier. 
After gathering the data, they used many statistical analyses. One of the examples was the multivariate regression analysis of the supervisor ratings matched with the employee performance ratings. And as a result of the analysis, they found out that there were a couple problems with their job design, such as bottlenecking spots and time delays, and then they improved their job designs. Also, as a fringe benefit, they found out that prior sales experience contributed to sales volume. So they modified their hiring profile to put a greater emphasis on prior sales experience. So finally, conclusion. Using analytics offers competitive edge in today's tough business world. It gives insights into important issues and also saves time and resources by preventing some serious mistakes or reduce the probability of your failures. So remember the three key attributes, widespread use, an enterprise approach, and strong advocates from the top. So if you want to become the analytics competitors, you need to have them. Also, there are two important notes. This analytics initiative requires to be a long-term project. After all, you need to gather the data for several years to have enough of them. Another thing is that finding the right talent is a big challenge. This analytical skill requires extensive training and years of experiences. But it is not impossible. Many organizations are doing so well, and I'm sure you can do it as well. So this wraps up my presentation. Thank you for your listening.